Hi, I'm Ali and a warm welcome to the Ceramic Repair Studio. So today I thought I would show you how to actually paint on ceramics on small items. Now they don't need much work but I do have a couple of hints and tips and to be honest although I'm only painting as you can see here on just he's just I've actually put milliput and it's been sanded and that just needs a little paint up there and also I've got some gold gilds on here where I've put the husk back on so although they're small items the same principle applies even if you've got a larger item so let's get going right so here we are with our two items here I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to paint this little fella here and as you can see he, as I said before I've merely put he it was broken on his cone I've fixed it back into place and I've actually put, put some milliput on there to just he was missing a few pieces so we're going to paint him in now when I'm painting this little fella in first I can see the color is quite it's more of like a, a yellow ochre color we can mix it but we're, we'll see how it goes now I always collect bottle tops of any description because they're great for painting so you can mix your paint and also if you're gluing you can mix glue in there as well so I've got my colour here which is the Windsor & Newton acrylic and it's the professional acrylic range I do find the hue is better uh, you get a better density of colour so always try to go for a professional range you can use powder pigments, that's fine too. Just depends what colour you've got in. So I'm going to use some of this. Now, with when it comes to this one here, this elephant with the husk, as you can see, I've again I've just put his husk back on and I've used milliput. So with him, because he's gold, I'm going to use um, some gold leaf here. So it's completely different. Now, when I'm mixing up, for instance, paint for this, for this ceramic piece, I'm going to add a little bit of ceramic glaze with it. Now, what I tend to use is the Rustins here, a ceramic glaze, and it comes in quite a large container. But to be honest, it's rather expensive. I think there's an equivalent which is more readily available, which is the Windsor and Newton ceramic glaze. Now, when you do get your ceramic glaze, obviously it dries out very quickly. So the best thing to do is to decant just a little bit into a jar and put the lid on. And then you can use this two or three times at least. But just put a little bit on just so you're not opening up the ceramic glaze all the time. Otherwise, it will dry out. So I've got my ceramic glaze in here. So I also have a cup of water. So we're going to mix a little bit with some a cup of water and you'll need some paint brushes so i have as you can see here an array of paint brushes but i'm going to use these two today i tend to use sable when i'm painting i do find they're better and you want one with a good point so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my windsor and newton as you see the top has come off so i've had to cover it with cling film and we don't need very much i'm just going to get an old paintbrush for this so just take a tiny tiny bit so it's a small item you always make sure you put the, I would say the lid but the cling film back on and we're just going to put it into our little top here then I'm going to add just a little bit of water to it I want it quite intense really the more watery you know the more you know you're going to see through it more translucent um so once we've done that i'd like to add at this point a tiny bit of ceramic glaze because this actually locks the paint in so i'll just get let's put it on there my ceramic glaze and with a clean brush just add just a tiny tiny bit of the ceramic glaze Uh, make sure also that the brush straight away goes into the water. So we're just going to give that just a little brush through. As I say, it's a very small item, so it doesn't need much, but it's the same principle applies if you have something which is you know, a larger piece. So 
here we are with the sable brush which I like to paint in I'll just put the other brush in the water and then we're just going to take our piece and we're just going to see if it's the right colour if it isn't that's fine we can always add some white or another colour to it I can see this has got different tones to it so it's not too bad it will be quite easy to paint in and you just just want to gel it gently go in with it now obviously when you have small pieces unless you have very good eyesight it's a good idea to wear reading glasses or have a magnifying glass or even better a professional magnifying glass with a light um, then you can see exactly what needs doing let me just paint that in and then you can kind of almost blend it through a bit as well and a bit in there so all because you need to get the exact color Now, because it's a, such a small piece, it's going to dry extremely quickly, which is great because then we can glaze it at the end as well. I'm just going to add a little bit in amongst, just to blend it in with the, the other part, just so it blends in through. And then I'm just going to keep looking. You don't want to overpaint it, otherwise you may end up, if you have too much paint on your brush, you'll end up with drip marks. So best to go over um, a little bit once it's dried. So I'm just going to leave that there to dry for a moment. And while that's drying, I'm going to have a look at this little fella here. So as I said before, this has come off. I've placed it back on and I've put Milliput on, it's sanded so it's ready for some gold leaf treatment. Now this isn't, I don't think this is a water base so you've got to be very careful because if it goes anywhere, if you shake it and the lid's not on, you'll never get it out of anything. So be very careful with the liquid gold. Um, so I'm just going to give it a slight shake, hold on, and then just open it up. And then we just take... Again, another, I'm going to go for a slightly larger brush this time. Let's go for a brush here. And we're just going to place just a little bit, as I say, because this dries extremely quickly, into our pot here. Our lid. Place the lid back on very fast, quickly. Now, because this is... Um, with this gold leaf you don't need to add ceramic glaze to it or you and you also don't need to glaze it after so we we'll take our item and i just assess and look where it is and i'd first of all just blend in now this product does come in um i think comes in a bronze color as well and also it comes in silver I do find this gold, it seems to be the best colour. It just seems to be a base colour for most golds, so it does kind of blend in quite well. So you just want to paint over and then just blend it through just a little bit, not too much. Keep as much original as possible. And then he's done, he's very nice and quick, so he doesn't need anything else doing to him. Again, once you've got, you finish with your brush, this needs to be put in soapy water. So what we've done here, let's put him to the side there. Let's go back to our item here. And to say it would have dried very quickly because we didn't apply very, very much paint to him. So now we're going to do a final glaze with him. So we'll take our glaze here from our pot and just going to put it, should have another lid here. And we just take again another small brush here, just a tiny bit of the glaze onto the lid. As I say, this will, a little bit goes a long way, so this should last quite a while. 
also a very good idea to actually write down what is actually on your jar and to place it somewhere high out of reach of children and animals as well. Also on another note, when you are painting and using any of these products, if you can be in a well ventilated room as well, um, a mask if you suffer with any allergies as well. So we've got our piece here, so I'm just going to add a tiny bit into there. And then I'm just going to look, place, and then just gently sweep. Now you don't want to go over too many times because you'll end up with brush marks. And you don't want too much either on your brush, otherwise you'll end up with drip marks. I'll just go over that. And then that will protect him, it's blended in nicely. And that's done. And then again, I'd then wash my brush. So there we are, two very small, simple items. As I say, it's small, but you know, it's the same principle applies to even larger items. So I do have playlists on how to repair and restore china, pottery and ceramics. Please look at that and please subscribe also if you haven't subscribed before and a thumbs up just to help with the algorithm. That would be great. And I really look forward to seeing you in the next one. OK, bye.